start it again. Hi, my name is Claire and welcome slash welcome back to my channel. Today I want to do a tutorial for Garm, the giant grave digger, a much beefier version of Terror. The entire early access of Ender Magnolia felt like a medium difficulty to me, slightly dabbing into hard until this boss, which pushed it with hard plus plus. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. First off, let's cover up the setup. Homunculi, equipment, and relics. On my main attack, which for me is coming from Ender Lily uh, Square, I put Lacerate, which is a blade slash bullet, which you can use from a distance, and you went distance with this boss. And it's somewhat medium attack. It's not really a hard attack. It's like 53, I think. In the same line with keeping the distance, again, with this boss, you'll want to do that. Uh, but with a cooldown period, we have uh, Lottie with her Glacial Fist. The only reason I use the Glacial Fist versus the Blazing Fist, uh, which I think they have about the same power, but the Glacial Fist, after three to four hits, gives the stun freeze, which lasts much longer than the regular stun. I would say almost double. I don't know, I haven't calculated the exact amount, but it feels like it. It has a margin of error because you jump and land, but uh, unlike the other one, which just goes from one side to the screen to another, so it has a safety to it. But I would say after you use it a few times, you get used to that distance. And even with the hectic rhythm of a boss, you'll figure it out when to use it. It also has an audible ding, I'll put it here, uh, that uh, whenever uh, the cooldown ends. So that's really nice. You'll get used to it and just use her over and over again. On my third ability, which I put on circle, more, more than once I jumped instead of using it, I put Nola's ability, Bone Pulverizer. My preference is close combat. So this was a tough boss for me because I had to keep my distance. I had to be patient. But Nola comes to play when you dash close to the boss. It's going to happen more than once. And every single time you get to stun the boss, and every single time you get to stun freeze the boss. Fantastic, you can get like five or six hits in the stun freeze. Great to use. It's super strong, about 188 plus from what I saw. Uh, so just it's about the same as Lottie. And Lottie also has the extra freezing ability. Unlike Ender Lilies, you can use four knights here or four powers, four weapons, whatever you want to weapon, name them. Uh, and on R1, I put Moonin, which is an idle ability. So you have to remember to trigger him. And once you did that, he just follows you around. If you can hit the boss with your bullets, Moonin would help hit the boss. It's not very strong, it's 20 something. But 20 something plus your bullet adds up and it's constant. Unlike in the Lilies, he doesn't have a, this amount of hits, they're infinite, which helps so much. The only thing that you have to think here is the cooldown. That's it. And even for that, you get the thing telling you, hey, it's done. Use me. <laughs> Another very good ability, which I could not get the timing right, is the Shackles Beast Chain Whip. So the Shackle Beast has this ability where he puts a shield around you, but if you uh, trigger it at the right time, so almost when an enemy hits you, it hits back. Now, I could trigger the shield, but I could not trigger it in proper time to hit back. So I ended up being under the shield, but doing no damage back. It also has a very long cooldown time. It's nine seconds. So I, I would forget to use it. it. It doesn't work for me, but it's a very strong attack. So if you get used to that timing, I, I would absolutely use it if I was better. <laughs> In my equipment, I place my strongest bracelets without even bothering to understand them too much. And in relics, I place aerial damage attack increase. Not that I gave a lot of aerial uh, attacks, but when I did, it just felt good to know that I had that 10%. So I'm not sure if it made a huge difference. Uh, and also the cooldown ability reduction time. Surely that made a huge difference because Lottie was used a lot in this uh, gameplay. Now to cover the boss or our main enemy. The boss has three stages and he does not change form, shape, size, anything. He just adds attacks. So each stage will add a new attack. Before I get to the attacks, just know that he always starts walking slowly towards you, which gives you a little bit of time, at least what I did, to activate Moonen, give Lottie a go. She is about the proper distance for Lottie and uh, spam a few bullets, why not? In the first stage, which ends around two thirds of the boss's life, he has three attacks. So by the end, we're gonna have five. Okay, so the first boss move is this jump into the air that ends up with him falling down and creating a shockwave. So dodge the shockwave towards him, away from him, whichever direction you are afterwards. If you're close to him, Nola, use Nola for sure. If you're far from him, use Lottie and the bullets. Just be careful at times, not a, signif not, not a significant amount of times, 
he will try to jump on top of you. Most of the time he stays away, but he will try at times to jump on top of you. And there is one way, to, two ways that you can stop that. When you can stun him, if you're lucky, of course, but you have to be in that, that's very precise. The other one, jump into the air, dash left, then right. And also you can do that on the ground, uh, dash left and right. Because when he falls on top of you, you get damage from the boss in itself and also immediately after from the shockwave. So if you can avoid at least one, if not both, if you jump into the air, you avoid both. That's just ideal. The second attack is a foot kick. And he's very slow after that. So it's very easy. He will foot kick when you are close to him, most, most likely. Or when Lottie is close to him, somehow that triggers him too. So if you are close to him, dash through him and you can easily use Nola here. Just careful because at times he can turn around and try to kick you there or give his third attack. And his third attack, which is the mildest, but it also always, always follows one of the other two attacks, is this pushing his gun into the ground, which creates the shockwave. So that's very stationary. If he would foot kick you, he would just turn around and do that. Uh, or if he jumps, he would turn around and do that. But that means that there is another shockwave, so be careful to avoid that. The second stage comes with an additional attack, which is this um, grinding rocks into the, the the ground with his weapon and they fly everywhere. Basically all those rocks can hurt you um, and positioning in this is key. You can stay behind him, so wherever he's facing, stay behind him and you have fewer rocks reaching you or you can stay at the end when all the rocks, you know, because they, they have a limit where they stop. But there is a last rock that goes farther. So careful with that one, you can dash through them. You can dash through all of the rocks. You can position yourself in between them. It just gets a little bit hectic. What I did was kind of like sit wait out the attack. If I was close enough, maybe spam a few bullets. And once he starts walking towards you, once he's done with the attack, I will use body, I will use bullets because he's somewhat at a distance. Another note on this stage, on the second stage and the rock attacks, every time you do a stun, free stun or regular stun, and you end your hits and he starts moving, that's the attack he's gonna go into. He is going to always go into the rock attack. So the second you see him defrosting or the second you see him moving from the stun, Back away. Good. Get out. Get out because you're going to get touched. A little less uh, than halfway through his health, he, was, he will go to stage three. He has the dramatic, pushes you back, I don't want to hear from you, and then he changes his mind. Animation that all Ender Lilies and their Magnolia bosses seem to have. Positioning in this stage is key, and I think it's what can make or break this stage because more often than not, what happened is that he goes into the stage from a stun. So I always think, oh, he's about to get to 40% of health. Let me stun him at the end of the uh, screen. Whichever end you pick, it doesn't really matter. The thing is that his first attack is going to be this big leap towards you that's going to corner you. And then he follows with this huge attack, which I'm about to explain. It's, it's the worst attack I have ever seen. It occupies about 80% of the screen. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I'll, I'll, find, I'll find an example of it. Um, so he starts with jumping, your normal jump, creates the shockwave. You will, of course, dodge through it, potentially towards him, but even away, it doesn't really matter. Because when he jumps, when he falls, it creates a spire of fire. Don't get caught in that. Then that spire becomes two spires. Don't get caught in that either. Then that becomes a huge blaze. It takes a ton of space. Again, don't get caught in that. After all that is done, at the end, you have five boulders that occupy a, a huge amount of space. You have space in between them to stay. That is probably ideal. You can dash towards him and you have one split second. I, I can't tell exactly where it is on the screen. I can when I play it, but I couldn't explain it now, where you can dash towards him and absolutely dash through all of the boulders and be able to give him a Nola hit. You can also dash away from the boulders or stay at the edge of the boulders if you're lucky, depending on your position. Position is key here so you don't get caught in any of this madness. And keep in mind that in this third stage, he moves a lot and he moves faster. He loves to jump, he loves his strong attack. So overall, my strategy for this boss was spam bullets when at a distance, use Lottie to freeze him as much as possible. If you get three free stages in this boss fight, you are golden, you can do it because you are gonna get the regular stun too. So use the freeze, use Nola whenever you are close, but be careful not to get hit by either boulders or his feet or his shock waves. He does everything. He throws everything at you. And in the last stage, which is not long, it feels like it's going to be long, but it's not that long. 
he's just so fast. So get used to the timing. This is this is all I can say. Now, without further ado, I will let you watch the gameplay. It's not perfect, but it's done. It's an incredibly difficult boss. So enjoy, and I hope this helps a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'll see you with more content on my channel. Until then, have an amazing day. Stay awesome, drink your water, wear your SPF, and get fed. Bye.